Hey guys, this is Mike with Lakeshore RV, and today we're going to take a look at Sean and Melanie's 23 MK by Grey Wolf. This is going to be a more of how to do video. And if you guys have any questions, uh, love to hear from you. Give me a call again. This is Mike with Lakeshore RV. My number is 231 855 9998. So we'll take a look up here in the front storage area. Plenty of storage. You got your manual crank for the power tongue jack. So if the power tongue jack gives you problems, usually a dead battery, something like that, you can always put it right on the top here and you can crank it up and down manually. Otherwise, there's a button you can push to extend and retract the leg. There's also a telescoping foot that'll give you an extra eight to 10 inches if you need it. Two 20 pound propane tanks, those are both full and ready to go. And then you got your um, brand new battery up front. And then things that can run off your battery are gonna be like the lights, the furnace, the slide out, the awning, the pumps. The only thing that really just need electricity are gonna be like uh, anything you plug in, microwave and air conditioner. Uh, also has a spot so where you can bring the TV from inside, you can drop it in outside, watch TV outside. We've also gotten the lug nuts torqued at 100 foot pounds. We've done it, the factory's done it, and the driver on his way up here probably did it, but that's kind of what the factory's recommending, so I would check it periodically. And then you have your outside camp kitchen. This one's gonna have hot and cold running water. You have an ice maker, and then you have a refrigerator that runs off AC, and that is plugged in. So that'll need AC as well. Get the nice glass doors, flip down travel rack, backup camera. The monitor is gonna be your phone. So if you take a look right here, you'll just see a little picture that you need to scan. Get that app on your phone, and then you can use your phone to um, keep an eye on what's going on behind you. Slide outs, if you're under trees, you wanna make sure you get up there, clean any sticks and debris off before you bring it back in. Small step stool would be suffice on this model. Okay, so you got an outside shower, you have uh, hot and cold running water. This is where you fill your fresh tank up with water. So if you don't have water, stick a hose in there, fill the tank up, and then you take all that water with you, or you can do it when you get into the campsite if they don't have um, on your site hookup. Otherwise, if they have water hookup, just screw your hose right under the city water and you run off the pressure from the hose. With the tank, you turn the pump on and it pressurizes the lines for you. Here's your power cord. It's 30 amps, you'll need 30 amps to run the AC and microwave. Otherwise, if you need to plug it in at home, there's a 15 amp adapter and that'll run everything but the AC and microwave. Flat tank flush. That'll be used in correlation with dumping your sewer tank. So you got your black tank on the left and then your gray tanks on the right. The black is for the toilet, the gray is for anything else, bathroom, sink, and shower. So hook your sewer hose up. Once you complete that connection, you figure out where you're gonna dump it into. Pull the black handle out, dump the waste, leave it open. And at that point, you'll hook a hose up to the black tank flush, turn it on, let it run for a few minutes. Again, just make sure that gate valve is open or you'll overfill the toilet and that'll go inside the coach. So shut the black hose off. Close the gate valve, pull the gray, and that'll rinse everything out for you because it's just soapy water for the most part. Cable TV input. Your water heater <laughs> runs off gas or electric. If you want to turn off propane, there's a switch inside, and I'll show you where that's at. If you want to turn off electricity, there's a switch here. Flip it down for electric flip it off, and then go inside and hit the propane for gas. And maintenance that I would do on this camper, if it was mine, I'd be up on that roof twice a year, minimum, inspecting the, inspecting the caulking for cracking. And if you do get some cracks that develop, you wanna go ahead and caulk right over the top of them with some fresh caulking. So it's really a five, 10 minute job. You do it twice a year, it'll really save you a lot of work and money down the road. Um, anything below the roof where there's a hole punched into the camper, like the cargo doors, the windows, the vents, the speakers, you want to check the top third silicone and all that. Um, if you see a crack in the silicone, you want to go ahead and re-silicone it. That I would probably do once a year. Let's take a look at the inside. So as you walk in through the door here, you got this little light switch on your right, and that's for um, the lights above the slide out. There's some cool decorative blue lighting. And then this is your monitor panel. This is gonna to monitor the fresh tank, which is fresh drinking water. Black tank is for toilet, and gray is for the drain water. 
and then your battery's showing full. And then you got your awning lights on and off here. That was the light we've seen above the sewer on the off side. That was on, so that turns that on and off. And then you got your main living room lights. And then you got your propane switch for the water heater. And then here's your water pump. Now, once you fill your fresh water tank up, you turn the pump on. The pump's not going to actually run until you lose pressure. You flush the toilet, run the shower. At that point, the pump will run for a minute. Once the pressure gets back up, you stop using it, then the pump shuts off. And then this will do the powered awning in and out. Now, if you get um, heavy winds or rain, I would go ahead and put it away. Heavy wind, to me, is anything over 10 miles an hour. Otherwise, you're welcome to stake it down from the corner. And you just continually hold that down until the awning's all the way out. And then once the flap drops down, that's kind of my key point to where I know to go ahead and stop. And there you go. Now you can also pitch it, loosen up this knob, pull the awning arm down, tighten it back up, and then you can create a pitch so the water's more apt to run off. Otherwise, extend it back up, bring it back in. This uh, sofa also turns into a bed, so that's a jackknife, so that'll flip into a bed. That um, big U-shaped dinette will also turn into a sleeping area. Then you got your fireplace. Runs off electricity. Turn it on. You can change colors. And you can do low heat, high heat, and then you also have a thermostat. So you can adjust the thermostat where you like it. And then there's also a timer that goes with it as well. It's kicking out some heat. You got your radio spot for a TV. All your hookups are right here. So if you're using an antenna, turn the booster on and then program the TV for local channels. Otherwise, turn it off. If you have cable hooked up directly from the outside, then you do a scan without the booster on. You got a great big uh, 11 cubic foot refrigerator. Technically, it's 10.9 cubic feet. If you want to shut the refrigerator off, but you want the RV on, you can hold this down for 10 seconds and then that'll turn the whole refrigerator off. Otherwise, if you want everything off, there's a battery disconnect down below. You turn the key, remove it, and that'll keep your battery fresh. Otherwise, if you're plugged in, keep the battery connected. If you're towing, keep the battery connected. The only time I would disconnect it if I was gonna store it. You have your full size shower. There's some linen closets right next to it. <coughs> Excuse me, nice big bathroom. And then there's storage right above the toilet. And then we have our um, suite to the bedroom. And there's some USB phone chargers next to the bed. And then there's also some storage here as well. And then you can access that through the outside if you need to. Another spot for a TV. So if you want to put a TV in over here, you can certainly do that. Now the AC is ducted through the trailer, so you'll see uh, various points where the AC ducts are. If it's a hot day, you can open these up. You'll have 80% of the air dumped down straight here on you, and then it's 20 through the vents. Otherwise, it's 100% through the vents, obviously. And again, if you guys have any questions, um, feel free to give me a call. Uh, again, this is Mike. My number is 231-855-9998.